Hi, I'm Brandon Grazley. I'm a high school math teacher. Let's talk about using the cosine law to solve for missing parts of triangles. Uh, here's one of the cases for which the cosine law will work. I've got a triangle here, ABC. I know one angle, 50 degrees, and I know two sides. This is side little b is what we will often call it. It's across from b or opposite b. And this is little c opposite from uh, vertex c. But notice we do not know side little a over here. And that's important. If we did know side little a, we'd be able to use the uh, sine law to figure out other things here. And the sine law is a little bit smaller or shorter than the cosine law, so we would do that instead. But here is a case where we will have to use the cosine law, which I'll show to you in just a minute. Uh, another situation that can happen, something like this. Let's do a different triangle, D, E, F. And maybe we know some of the side lengths, like that. In fact, all of the side lengths but I don't know any angles. See here I know three sides but I don't know any of the angles inside. This is another case where the sine law can't help us because for the sine law you have to have an opposite side angle pair. Here no angles therefore no sine law. So let's take a look at this first one over here um, ABC, this triangle ABC. Here's the cosine law. Here's how it works for any triangle. If we have uh, three sides little a, little b, little c and here's this opposite um, uh, this angle here A opposite from little a. I'm going to write it like this. a squared equals b squared plus c squared. That's the beginning. Now you might notice this looks a lot like Pythagorean theorem and it is if a here was a 90 degree angle and, a, and little a then was a, hypo, a hypotenuse. But because it's not a hypotenuse we make a little adjustment subtracting 2 times the, each of the short sides or the other sides b and c times 2 times b times c times the cosine of this angle here, uh, corresponding here, A. So I want to show you how this is structured. It's like Pythagorean theorem with a little adjustment term. And these two, A and A, are opposite sides and angle pairs. You have to know one of those. And notice that we know all of the stuff over here on the right-hand side. We're going to find little A. That's this unknown side right here. We're going to find little A and we're going to do it by filling in all of this stuff on the right hand side. So let's do it right now. a squared equals b is 12, so 12 squared plus little c is 10, 10 squared minus 2 times 10 times 12 times the cosine of angle a which is 50 degrees. So that's 144 plus 100 Okay, 10 times 12 is 120, times 2 is 240, so that's minus 240 times the cosine of 50 degrees. Alright, let me grab my calculator. So this is a phone. This one is an immediate execution calculator, which means when I do this cosine, I'm going to have to type 50 and then press cos. Uh, your calculator may have a different order. Uh, so let's, uh, let me just do this all at once here. 144 plus 100 minus, now in this calculator I will type 240 times, see how it's waiting for me to finish here, I'm going to type 50 and then cos. Now that's the cosine of 50, I press equals to finish everything off. It's about 89.7. That's a squared. a itself is about the square root of that value. And so it is approximately uh, let me just store that. Take the, oh, I don't need to. I'll just take the square root. Nine, about 9.47 or 9.5. Now let's just look up here. Does that make sense so far? Okay, it seems like it's similar to these other angles. So we're partway finished this. Let me just write that in a different color. This is about 9.47. Now, because we have found one side, or uh, this, yeah, this remaining side here, and we already know one angle, we now have a side angle pair right here, a and little a. And so now we, we can use the sine law. So we're going to do that. We'll use the sine law to find either one of the remaining angles. doesn't matter which one. Let's pick b as an example. So to find angle b, we're going to use the sine law. And sine law says that sine b over b equals sine of any other angle over its corresponding opposite side. We're going to choose the one that we know. We know angle A, we know side A, so we're going to choose sine A over A. There's the sine law. Let's fill in everything we know. We know everything except for angle B. So sine of angle B, and I chose to put this on the top since that's what we're finding. 
divided by little b, that is 12, equals sine of 50 degrees, divided by little a, which is 9.47, approximately. Now we solve this. Sine b is equal to 12 times the sine of 50, divided by 9.47. I'm going to evaluate this first. Let's write it down. The sine of b is equal to um, 12, you can't see, sorry, 12 times, now I can't see, times the sine of 50 divided by 9.47, which I have stored, oops, there. Okay, I got 0 0.9704. Approximately, and now I'll do a sine inverse on that value to find out what angle B is. Angle B is equal to, let's do sine inverse, so on here, second function, sine inverse. Looks like it's about 76 degrees. Okay, cool, let me write that in on my diagram. B is 76 degrees. Well, for the remainder then, all I need to do is uh, find out what angle C is, these three angles have to add up to 180. So I can do this just down, I'm going to squeeze it in at the bottom here. Angle C is 180 degrees minus angle A minus angle B. That's 180 degrees minus angle A was 50. Angle B was about 76. So angle C is approximately equal to, I guess I'll crack out a calculator for that to be certain, 180 minus 50, minus 76, 54 degrees. Does that seem right? Uh, 120, 130, and 50. Yes, okay, so 54 degrees. Let's write that down. Okay, looks like we have finished our triangle. Let's do the verification step. Uh, in any triangle, angles and sides sort of match each other. Small angles are across from small sides. So here's our smallest angle. And is this our smallest side? It is. Good. There's our next smallest angle, 54. That is our next smallest side. Good. And our largest angle is across from our largest side. Okay, so that's a quick check. If any of those didn't work out, then we know we've made a mistake. Okay, let's try this other triangle now. So in this case, we're going to have the same kind of equation, but we're going to be looking for an angle. And we can solve for any angle that we want, because we know all three sides we'll be able to fill in all of the little values here and we just won't be able to fill in an angle. So let's, uh, we might as well try to find out what is D. So if we are going to be looking for this value of D, angle D, then we will organize our cosine law equations so that the angle D will appear in this cosine part, which means we need to match it with little d, side D, over here. So our equation will look like this. D squared equals E squared plus f squared. Those are the two other sides, so that's the 5 and the 6, or rather the 6 and the 5. That looks like Pythagorean theorem, minus the adjustment, 2 times e times f times the cosine of the angle that matches this one, d, the one we're looking for. So notice again, these things match, and the e and the f are the other two sides. All right, we fill stuff in. Little d is 7. Little e is across is 6, little f is 5, minus 2 times 6 times 5 times the cosine of d. That's our unknown. That's what we want to solve for, so we're going to need to isolate that cosine of d bit, and then we'll use an inverse function to get our uh, d angle back. Let's just start evaluating first, though. Uh, let's see, 25. Over here, that's going to be 6 times 5 is 30, times 2 is 60. So that's minus 60 times the cosine of d. Now, it's a very common problem. A lot of people go 36 plus 25 minus 60. But you can't do that because this 60 is not just 60. It's 60 times this other stuff. It's got a variable in there. We don't know it. We don't know the value of this term. They are not alike, so you can't combine them with these two. These three here are all constants and can be combined. So let's do that. I'm going to actually add 60 cos d to both sides. That will have the effect of, we'll end up with a 60 cos d, a positive 60 cos d on this side. 
I'm going to subtract 49 from each side. That'll have the effect of having a 49, a minus 49 over here. So let's keep going. 60 cosine d equals, okay, 36 plus 25 is, looks like, 61 minus 49. Well, 61 minus 49 is 21, minus 9 is 12. Is that right? I'm going to double check because I'm, it's late and I'm tired. 36 plus 25 minus 49. Whew, okay, it is 12. That's good. Now, check it out. This is 60 times a thing that I want equals 12. Let's divide both sides by 60. That way, 60s will cancel here, or divide out, and I'll be left with 1 times cos d equals, hmm, 12 over 60. That looks like a pretty nice number. That's 1 fifth, or 0 0.2, and you can use your calculator for that if you like. Sweet, now I know what the cosine of d is. That means that the angle d is the cosine inverse of this value. Now I grab my calculator again, and to find cos inverse of 0.2, I'll type in 0 0.2, I'm on second function, and I'll press the cos inverse button. And there we go, it looks like it's about 78 uh, degrees, 78.4. If I fill it in up here, well, my uh, camera's drifting down. That's what's going on. Everything was getting very large. Uh, if I write that in up here, 78 degrees, notice what we now have. A side angle pair. Sweet! We can do exactly the same thing we did over here now to find a remaining angle. Use the, cos uh, use the sine law, let's say, to find E. And then, once that's done, we'll know two angles. We can use uh, 180 minus those two angles to find the third side. So give that a try. It's just like the other one. It finishes off with sine and then finding it, sine law and then finding an angle. Now these are the only two kinds of things that can happen with the cosine law. You, can, uh, you will use it when you have an angle with the two sides that are next to it but you don't have the opposite side or you can use it when you have all three sides uh, but no angles. Okay, I hope that helps and uh, good luck.